it's another day here at the comeback team studios and this is your host beck lover and i have one of the most extraordinary females in the world reporting for us today from the republic of kosovo also known as kosova i have the youngest female in the world to climb and reach the summit of the highest mountains on every single continent on earth an extraordinary accomplishment i have with us today the amazing the wonderful the beautiful marika nikci welcome to the comeback team hi back thank you, you for the amazing words how you doing <laughs> i'm doing good i'm doing great actually thanks you could have been a supermodel like many people in peya because you come from the town of peya kosova yes and if so, said I chose to be a mountain climber, <laughs> a lot of a lot of models come from that town. Uh, yeah. Miss Miss Universe, Miss Kosovo. Yes, a and lot of. So there's something in the water in that area in Peya. This is what the locals say. You guys have some of the most beautiful women in the world. Yes. You have one of the gold medalists in the yes. sport and the sport of kung fu. No, sorry, judo. Judo. Oh, yeah, judo. She won the first gold medal for the country of Kosovo. Yes. In the Olympics, uh, Melinda uh, Kelmendi. Yes. So we have some like amazing females coming out of Peya. Yes. And you are one of them. Uh, yes. <laughs> so I guess we'll start with what you have accomplished, which, you know, maybe we're jumping the gun, but you climbed to some of the highest mountains on earth and so that's some of the most dangerous things you can do on this earth it's one of the most dangerous sports yes many people have attempted to go to mount everest yes mount kilimanjaro mm -hmm. and many people have died never making those accomplishments and you at the age of 17 yeah accomplished this with your father mm -hmm. so Let's start with when, how, how young were you when you started, you know, hiking mountains? Now you do come from a very mountainous region, Albania and Kosovo yes. have some nice mountains. Yes, very beautiful mountains. Um, I come from Rugova village. So, um, like basically I always went to the mountains with my family, like into the villages, like small walks and stuff. And I also trained karate for 10 years. So I was the comp competitor. Uh, I also like skiing and I was a ski competitor, competitor so um, skiing, mountains, walking on the mountains. So I was very young when I started to go on the mountains. But mountains here in Kosovo are 2,000 and something feet? high. Yes. No, meters. Oh, meters. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's like 6,000 feet. feet. Yes. And uh, I was maybe like, I don't know, 10 or 11 when I started to go and hiking. And then I started to climb uh, higher peaks, like the highest in Kosovo, and then the highest in Albania, the highest in Balkan. So, you know, I was like, I wanted to, to do more and more. And then I saw myself climbing Mount Everest, the highest in the world. If you, were, if you would have asked me five years ago what, uh, what I've been doing in 2019, like, I don't know. I would never say I would be climbing uh, Mount Everest. So when you first started trekking on mountains, mm -hmm. okay, you never really envisioned the fact that you would accomplish this world record. I mean, that's a record. You're the, you're the youngest female in the world to have climbed and peaked every uh, one of these mountains that are on the highest on each continent. Yeah. So first and foremost, <clears throat> so you were always athletic. It sounds like you were in sports from a young age. Yes. Is this something that your family pushed you into? Like originally, like they got you into sports or was it something that mutually you just wanted to do? I mean, did, did you, did they put you into sports first? Your, your family? Yes, yes. Because I was very young and they got me into sports. My dad, he always loved sports and he was like, why don't you try karate or why don't you try basket or skiing? And I liked all of them, but hiking and climbing, I, I just fell in love with that. You know, I'm like, this is what I like and this is what I'm going to be doing always but yeah they, they, they got me into the sports first and then i fell in love with it i'm embarrassed that i'm very connected to the albanian world mm -hmm. i mean you know but i've kind of you know i've taken a little bit of a back seat uh you know in the last two years okay. i was very active in our community and so i'm embarrassed that i only found about i only found out about something this amazing in the last week i saw a video that someone posted on their wall and i was actually my first thing as an albanian american 
I was ashamed that I didn't know. So I want to ask for your forgiveness. But at least I can say the second I found out, I called you. I said, I got to I got to have her on my show. And I want to thank you for, for coming on. So you're athletic at a young age. Now, do you have a lot of siblings? You have sisters, brothers? I mean, I only have one brother and he is younger than me. And he also is very into sports. Like he was seven or seven. No, he was 11, uh, nine when he climbed the highest peak in Balkan. Wow. So, yeah. I can't climb my stairs. I, I, I'm not joking. Like I'm very out of shape right now. So, you know, you, you, you know, for, 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 you know, people say girls, you've done what most men will never ever do in their life. So you're what I call a pioneer in the fact that, especially, you know, from places where, you know, you know, you're breaking glass ceilings, especially in that part of the world where maybe up until recently women weren't on the same playing field as men. I think it's fair to say that yeah. we had some, you know, maybe some backward stances towards women originally in, you know, Balkans and, you know, ancient cultures. And, you know, so there's, you know, that's the truth of it. We can't deny that. But yeah. I think when someone like you does something that you've done, it's, it's amazing. And it just proves the point that, you know, women can do phenomenal yeah. things. Yes, there there you go. I mean, you know, we can't do everything you do though. Right. We can't, I can't <laughs> have a baby. So, you know, but yes. <laughs> there's a lot of things that, you know, are just amazing. So I think you're proving that point. To, to, to our people also. Yes. So when you start hiking these mountains, now obviously your dad, this is something he always loved. Yes. He always loved the mountains. And actually he was, he works as a lawyer and he has uh, like a lot of work to do and a lot of stress, a lot of pressure. And every weekend uh, we would go on a, on a hike in Rogova or we would go spend the weekend in Rogova. So he would relax and he wanted the family to be all together, you know, like spending the weekend all together. And we found that uh, we, we found out that uh, that's the best way for us to be together, to stay healthy and positive. And because when you go on up to the mountains and you climb with with groups and other people, you also share your experience and, you know, you just meet new people. And it's very it is it is very good and very nice. And I think that's why he always liked the mountains and told us to like the mountains. <laughs> when you study theology, they speak of Adam and his first children, the first human beings on earth, from a theological perspective. I just find it interesting, uh, peace be upon him, that, uh, that they say in scripture that the first human beings actually lived in the mountains and then they came down from the mountaintops. You know, after Cain killed his brother Abel, he went down from the mountain and that Adam had commanded his children to not leave the mountaintops. So from a, from a historical perspective, you know, if, you know, theology, yeah. right. So I find that kind of interesting. It's, I think it's in human nature to be one with the mountains and our people are very connected to the mountains. It's probably the only, yeah. it's probably the only reason we still exist. The Albanian nation yeah. lives in a very mountainous area, which made it very treacherous and made it also a way to kind of protect us from our enemies. Now, when you say you go to the Rogova mountains, do you go to that resort area that they call Bog, or are you going to family in the villages? No, uh, there is another vid village. It's called Shkupechi Mal, and it's far away from Bog. It's not in Bog, and it's like uh, it's family area. My my grand uh, my grandfather uh, from my dad's side, he he lived there with his old family, and as you know, Albanian families before they were like ten siblings or fifteen. They they were very big families. So like the Stupechi Mal is only with niches, filled with niches and Kilmande. So it's not it's not connected with Bog, no. Close to the Montenegrin border? Uh no, 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 no. It's like uh maybe twenty kilometers from Peya, far from Peya. Okay, so is it closer towards the Albanian border in yeah. Kosovo? No, it's closer to the Montenegro one. Okay, so it's closer towards the Montenegrin border. Okay, it's a very mountainous region and it's a beautiful place. People that love mountains. You know, if you're following this episode, you, you know, if you think Colorado is beautiful, if you think Switzerland's beautiful, and they are, yeah. you really got to see Kosovo and yeah. Albania. They have amazing mountain ranges and they're developing them now, finally. Yeah. That's so, true. so you did some skiing. So you're very familiar with that environment and it's, it's in your genetics to, you know, that's where your ancestors come from. For hundreds of years, they lived in those mountains and those mountain tops. Now, are these considered a part of the what the Albanians called the cursed mountains? Is that the same mountain range or no? Uh, not Bishnama. all of them. Because in Kosovo, we have cursed mountains, we have Shar mountains, we have, you know, like different 
range of mountains and then Albania are different ones. But yeah. So you start doing these hikes with your father. You yeah. start becoming a routine. You start falling in love with the mountain hiking. Is that, that the proper yeah. type of terminology? Hiker? Uh, hiking is like just climbing. Walking. Climbing is climbing. It's, I do both. Basically, it, when you climb, when you climb like Everest, you need to do hike and you need to do climbing because you cannot just hike because you have to climb a big chair, you know, like an ice fall, and you you have mixed climbing and hiking. But if you come in Kosovo, you can do a hike. You just walk, you know, on the mountains for hours, and you gain elevation. But you also can do the climbing, like climb on the wall, climb on the rocks, or whatever. So I do both. So obviously, going to Mount Everest is no. <laughs> There's no walk in the park, as they say in America. It's not like, it's not a joke, okay? Because yes, you, you can die. So how do you go from this being a weekend sport to you decide, no, I'm going to climb not only Mount Everest, I'm going to climb every single of the world's most dangerous mountains. Mm -hmm. how, how does that, and you're only 19 years old, so it wasn't like, how do you get to that point? Um, I don't know. I always liked adrenaline. I find... I, I find like that's adrenaline. And I think that's why I wanted to climb Everest. Uh, I first, my first expedition, it was climbing Mont Blanc uh, in, in France and Italy border. And that's the highest in Alps. And I uh, failed because I was only 15 and I got altitude sickness. And I think that's where I said, maybe I'm not made for the mountains, you know? And so what was that like? Explain to people, because remember, not everybody understands mountain climbing, the risks. What is what is uh, altitude sickness feel like? Um, you know, as higher as you go, the oxygen is more thin, like thin, you know, it lacks the oxygen. And your body to work needs oxygen. When you, when you climb, when you hike, your body needs oxygen, your blood needs, needs oxygen. And I was very young and I couldn't like breathe probably so i had a lot of headache uh stomach ache like uh, my blood pressure pressure was very low or very high you can from altitude sickness you can die also because you can have sort of like edema and that's that it, it is very very dangerous and i was starting to feel sick because of the altitude and then the the weather was very bad and the guy said you cannot climb it you know and that's when I said, it's maybe I'm not made for the mountains. But then after climbing Kilimanjaro, I also got altitude sickness, but I didn't want to give up because, you know, I'm not that person who says, okay, I'm giving up. I don't know why. I just, I'm like, okay, no. Okay, so, 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 so let's, let's pause for one second. So you, 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 you decide to climb the highest mountain in Europe. Yes. You get sick. Yes. You did this at the okay. age of 15. Yes. Rather than give up, what did you tell yourself to try again? I mean, did you start training? Did you have to do any type of training for this? I, I, I um, even even when I went to climb the highest in, in, in Alps, I was training a lot. But, you know, altitude, you, you never know when altitude sickness gets you. You can be very acclimatized and in the next day you can get altitude sickness. So you, you don't know. It's, it, and sometimes it is like... It is in your genetics if you if you feel it or if you don't. Sometimes, not always, because there are people who climb Mount Everest without oxygen, and there are people who climb it with oxygen. So it happens. But I got really sick from the altitude sickness, and I failed. And to be honest, at first I was like very broken inside. I'm like, okay, maybe I'm not made for the mountains because I was just starting my career as a mountain climber, and I failed. And I didn't want to climb mountains at all. But after like maybe two, two weeks, I'm like, nah, let's go climb a mountain again. And then we went climbing a mountain. And then I started training more and more. Like I always wake up at 5 a.m. and do my training, like walk on the mountains for hours and hours with my dad, with big uh, backpacks, heavy backpacks. And then I do some CrossFit. I do spinning. I, I train. I, I train a lot. Um, so how do you, I mean, did you have special preparations for these? Did you eventually reach the summit of that mountain? Uh, which one? The one that I failed? Yeah, so you failed there, but you said you reached all of them. So did you eventually go no, back? Not that one. No, I plan to go back and climb it because I didn't climb it because I failed it. And then I started, I decided to go to climb Kilimanjaro, which is the highest in Africa. After okay. I climbed, after I failed climbing this one, my dad said, do you want to come with me in Africa and climb Kilimanjaro and you know as all as all young people they want to like visit the world and be cool and I'm like yeah why not I sh like I'm going to Africa I'm gonna be cool and stuff you know I never thought of the mountain I'm like okay it's okay even if I climb it or if I don't climb it 
But then when I was there, uh, it was very interesting and it was very challenging because we were ga gaining elevate, uh, elevation and we were like doing really good uh, until summit day. Summit day was very hard for me. I got altitude sickness again. And um, the guy said, like the guy said, Vika, you cannot go further because you have altitude sickness. And my group actually, they went and they left me with the porters, with the local people there. And I was there with my dad and they were like trying to give me some tea to drink some tea. And I was like, I, I just want to sleep, just leave me here. And I want to sleep. I was feeling very bad. I was like vomiting all the time and stuff. And, um, and then like my dad said, Mika, do you want to go back? You know, we don't want to risk your life because my life was in, my life was in danger. And I'm like, no, <laughs> don't ask me that because I, like, we were trained, we, we were, we, we have, we've been training for like months and months now to climb this one and we are this close and to come like to go back. I'm not doing that. So, and he said, like, sometimes he can be like, then like, don't talk much, just go, like, just climb, climb, climb. But I could, I could see it in his eye. Like I could see it in his eyes that he is very sad and he was very worried for me, but he just didn't want to show it, you know, as like dads are like, okay, you can do it. And then when I went to the summit of Mount Kilimanjaro, you don't know what sunrise can do. Like I never believed it. Like porters always, like they were telling me, Mika, just wait until the sun, sun rises and then everything will be gone. And I'm like, yeah, what sun will do? But believe me, when, when the sun rise, I'm like, I didn't feel headache. I wasn't vomiting at all. Like everything was gone. I was feeling very good. I was laughing and dancing on top of Kilimanjaro. And that was the reason. And that was the moment when I decided to climb the seven summits. Because I'm like, yeah, why not to see the sunrise from the seven peaks? you know, of the seven highest continents. And then I just told my dad, yeah, why don't we do the seven summits? And he was like, okay. So a lot of interesting points there. First and foremost, again, you're facing a very difficult challenge. Yes. Okay, being sick. When I get sick, I don't want to do shit. I just want to go to my room and curl up into a ball and give up. <laughs> I just, because, you know, when you're sick, and, I, and I've been sick many times in Kosovo, by the way. <laughs> Yeah. I can't okay. tell you how many times I've gotten sick there. You know, I ate something that wasn't good for me or whatever. And then when that happens, I don't want to, I, I just want to lay in the bed and I don't want, I don't want to move. <laughs> okay. Here you are on one of the world's highest mountains in Africa. Mm -hmm. You're getting sick. Mm -hmm. Your father's there. Me as a parent, I'm a parent. I'd be terrified because God forbid something happens. I'm, I, I brought her with me. Yeah. So your father's in a very difficult position. And you decide to find this courage within you and you go, no, no, I'm going to no. push past this pain, mm -hmm. risk my life, basically. Do you know why? And you I, went I, to the top of the damn mountain, which I find freaking amazing, man. Absolutely amazing. It is, it is very disappointing how people try to push it back, you know, to it back. Uh, when I, I just when gave I you, I just fun. gave you, I just gave you a round of applause. I don't know if you heard that. No, Pe people didn't. clapping. Oh, you can't hear my sound effects. Mm -hmm. That's okay. I made them clap. So basically, so what were you saying? I'm sorry, I cut you off. So you were. Oh uh, yeah, I find it very disappointing how people can push you back, like try to like to uh, discourage you. Because when I climbed, when I failed to climb the first mountains, like Mont Blanc, as I told you, a lot of people said, "Yeah, we all knew that." she would fail because she's like a female and she's only 17 is it was is she's only 15 because i was 15 at that time and then when i when i wanted to go to climb kilimanjaro they were like yeah she's gonna fail again because her dad got the money to send her over there and like they're just trying to do it but they won't succeed because you know they're not like strong enough and the girl she's like because i was 17 at the, i was seven yeah so I, no i was 16 at the time 17 i'm not sure and they were all like, they were, they were all like, no, you're not climbing. Eh? And that was very like, okay, I don't want, I just want to tell these people that I am climbing this mountain and I'm not coming back. You know, I'm going to prove you all that you are wrong, even though I'm, even though I'm 17 and I'm a female and whatever, my dad has the money maybe to send me there, but no one is carrying me on their backpack on top of the world, on top of the mountain. I have to, I have to do it again. By, by myself because on the mountains no one can help you it's just you you can help yourself and no one else you know and uh, maybe that's one of the reasons why i, I didn't i didn't give up because i didn't I, I just wanted to prove all of them wrong sometimes you know when people make you angry it helps 
Yeah, it, sometimes it helps. Especially but when I'm, you're Albanian. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is very interesting because I'm, 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 like, I'm that kind of person who's like, yeah, whatever, you know? But that, that got me because it was really sad and that really hurt when people say to you, yeah, her dad sends her because he can and she's not strong to do it. You know, it hurts. When you're Sometimes, you know, the haters don't realize all they're doing is giving us fuel. You yeah. know, I love haters, man. I got a lot of haters. Trust me. I get a lot of comments. I laugh at them, man. Okay, no problem. I'm out here doing my thing. I'm yeah, out here putting you, myself on the line. You're yeah. some clown behind a computer. You don't even put your real picture. You're not even, you can't even stand behind your own comments. Yeah, right. So I don't listen to haters. And you've proven to people why they should never listen to their haters. You should take yeah. what they say and laugh and say, you think yeah. you know who I am? You haven't seen who I am yet. Right. Beautiful. Yeah. I love it. So on the top of that mountain, you have this epiphany. You have this beautiful vision. You see an amazing view. You're with your father and you say, dad, I want to yeah. climb and summit every single one of the world's largest mountains. Yes. And he says, let's do it. Yeah. Now, before Kilimanjaro with you, did your dad ever do any of these besides the one in the Balkans and in, in France? Did he ever attempt to do any of these mountains ever on his own? By my own? No, your dad. Did he ever do this ever before no, you? No, he you no, know, he only climbed in Kosovo when he was like younger or when he climbed without me. I mean, for him, it's amazing too. I mean, even though he's not like yeah. a record breaker, it's just anyone that can do that. It's it's amazing. So yeah, respect to Papa. What's his first name? Uh, Arianet. Arianet. You like yes. these Albanian names, Arianet Nikci. We salute you at the comeback team. And and and, and uh, the guide. Uh, who we climbed the seven summits, like most of them, he used to call us crazy Kosovars and crazy Albanians. He was like, in here, you know, you, you are uh, a country with 1.8 million, you know, people who live there. And we, in our mountaineering uh, area, we have 1.8 million people. And you from Kosovo, you come and climb the highest mountain in the world with 17. And you try to break this record and that's amazing and he was always like yeah you are the crazy kosovars yeah you can do it yeah i don't care about you because you know i'm not i'm like i don't need to worry about you because i know you'll you'll do fine and he he was like yeah go team kosova what was the uh, guide's name mike mike hamill he's the owner of climbing the seven summits company he also is the author of the book climbing the seven summits we climbed everest um uh, Albros. we climbed some mountains with him and he's a very professional guide you definitely and, you definitely recommend him if you want to attempt to do this this oh, is the yes, guy yes 100 yes he's expert yeah. <clears throat> so from kilimanjaro you decide to go to which mountain next oh antarctica then sun just yes. seen <laughs> just seen antarctica I, I have no desire to go there i'm going to be very honest with you i have absolutely i hate snow i hate yeah, the cold I hate winter. I just shoveled two feet of snow right now. I'm miserable. And you purposely go to these places. <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> but uh, Antarctica is different kind of it's different kind of place. It's like amazing. And we got stuck for eleven days in Antarctica because of the weather. Now you took and a you took a you took a boat there. Or you flew to Antarctica. You took a yeah, boat. Yeah, we flew from yeah we flew from Kili to Antarctica, and then from like the base camp of Antarctica, it's Union Glacier Call. We flew to base camp Vincent Base Camp, and then we got stuck in Vincent Base Camp after we summited. We got stuck for eleven days, and no one got stuck for eleven days before. You can get stuck for like three days, four maximum because of the weather. And we got stuck for like 11 days and it was too much. Like the food and everything was so low. People, people all started worrying and like, you know, they were getting sick and stuff. Like maybe we are here forever, blah, 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 blah. But I'm like, yeah, whatever. We're here in Ant Antarctica. So. so you went to Antarctica. You had a very dangerous expedition. Yes. Now, what very time of the year did you guys go there? Um, it was December 2018. So was that like Antarctica's summer? Yes. yes so there's only important. a certain time you can even try to attempt this, right? You can't just go any time of the year there. No, you can't. So when because you went, you is. had a you had a you had a major setback. Mm -hmm. You got stuck uh, 22 days. You're talking about. And I almost got my I know I almost got nose frostbite. You almost lost your nose. No. Yeah. Wow. 
So was the winds heavy? I mean, what was to explain the environment that you were in? Were you intense? I mean, how are you staying warm? You, you're running low on food. I mean, you got to really describe this scene for us. We got to understand. I, I want to bring the audience into this very dangerous situation, in my opinion. I mean, I would never attempt. I'm telling you right now, I would never do what you've done, no matter how athletic I am. Because I'm like, Yo, you, you only got one life and God forbid, but some people use that the other way. Like you only have one life, you might as well go for it. But, you know, uh, you know, I'm never jumping out of a plane. It's not happening. Mm -hmm. Have you ever jumped out of a plane? No, I wanted to when I was in America last year after I uh, summited uh, Everest. But they said you have to be 18 to to jump from an airplane. I'm like, please, like I've climbed Mount Everest. Let me jump from that airplane. They're like, no, when you, you turn 18, you can come here and jump from the airplane. But that's uh, one thing that I want to do in the future. So, so take us now into this very scary situation. I mean, please, it's fascinating. Um, we were, um, we were going back, we were, uh, climbing up to camp three, which is the last camp before summit. And the winds were, were very high. Like we, um, like we couldn't see each other or we couldn't do anything. Like we were just walking. I couldn't see my dad. He was like two meters from my, in my robe, like two meters far away from me. And I couldn't see him and stuff. And anyway, we got to, to the camp. We set up the tent and everything. And then we got inside and we didn't go from our tents for like one day. And then after one day, because Antarctica can be a uh, uh, really, really pretty and really, really nice weather and everything. And in five minutes, it can be like, whoa what's happening where am I like you don't know where you are so the next day after the wind uh, stopped and stuff we started our climb for the summit and the weather was very nice the sun was up no clouds on on the sky and we were like very happy for the weather and we stood on top of Antarctica and some guy in my group he said Mike can we stay 10 more minutes on the summit, you know? And he said, no, we cannot because Antarctica can be very unpredictable. So we have to go back to our tents. And we started to climb down back to our tents where this big winds start just coming up and it, it got really, really foggy. Uh, it was really cold. We were just trying to survive it. We were walking, we couldn't see each other. Like it was just a rope. The guide was uh, behind us because it is the rope system when you're climbing down. He was behind us and we were just following one route, one one route. And then we got to our tents and one of my, uh, my friends in my group, she was a heart surgeon. So her hands were very cold and she, she, she was worrying of getting uh, frostbite in her fingers and she cannot like do her job anymore. And she was like, oh my God, I cannot feel my hands. And I'm like, yeah, I can help you. And I couldn't even help myself at the time, but I'm like, yeah, I'll help you. Don't worry, wait for me. And in that moment, I left my nose, you know, without covering it. Exposed. Cover my nose. Yes, exposed, thank you. And uh, I just couldn't feel it. And then I while I was helping my friend, Mike, this guy came and he was like, Rika, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm helping my friend. And when he's home, he's like, go back inside, go back in your time immediately and cover your nose because you're getting nose froze. Like my nose was all fried. It was a really, uh, a little bit white on top here because it was just starting like the blood to go like, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it in English. The, the beginning of frostbite, which is dangerous. Yes. You could lose your yes. nose. It was very dangerous. But I didn't care, to be honest, that I, I was getting nose frostbite because I was very happy because I stood on top, on top of Antarctica and I was really, really happy. What like, is that? Like, is there a name for that mountain? Forgive me for being ignorant. Is there a name Mount for Vincent. the... What's yes, it called? Vincent. Vincent. So now you knock out two of the craziest mountains in the world. You make it back. Okay, now you're like what we call a veteran, right? I mean, you, you knock out two crazy mountains. You're not an amateur anymore. Now, first of all, I forgot to ask you, how many people in these groups when you go into these mountains? Uh, in, in, in Vincent, we were maybe nine or 10 people in the group. Can't the, the people yeah. also cause you to fail? Like if they get really sick or they get hurt, don't you have to cancel because of them or can you keep going? No, you can, keep, you can keep going because there are other guides who can go back with them. Okay, so. so. Some, yeah, there are the guides who <clears throat> be with people who want to climb and there are the guides if what someone do, gets sick or something, they go back. With what them. are these expeditions? I mean, you know, just, just for the mountain to get up, forget, you know, flying there and all this other stuff. I mean, what does these stuff cost? I mean, 
Oh, for a lot. Like what? Because I want people to understand if you want to have this hobby, like, you know, you need to, is it 10,000 a person, 20,000 a person? Um, it was almost $5,000 for two person to go in Antarctica without the clothes, without everything. Like only Everest suit was $1,000. The what? Only Everest suit. Only Everest suit, like down suit was $1,000. Okay. And so, like, but the actual. For... Everest is like. Uh, maybe one hundred thousand dollars. It is very, very, very expensive to go to the top of Everest. Yes. Wow. So the guides, I mean, obviously they charge top dollar. Who the hell wants to go up on a dangerous mountain if you're not making at least thirty thousand or forty thousand dollars? You have to pay yeah. for that guide because they're coming to. They can save your life. God forbid something yeah. goes wrong, and they're not yeah. cheap because they know what they're doing. They're experts. Because mm -hmm. they're risking their lives too. Yes, they do. But when you, yes, but they don't put you in situation when you are that dangerous you know if the if they know that the weather is going to be bad they stay on the tents like they, they take a day off but sometimes mountains can be very unpredictable and when you are climbing the weather can be like turn so like what i'm this. saying nobody nobody knows the weather except god yeah you know, they, especially on the mountain well, sometimes tops. even guys don't know the weather like you never know when it's so gonna be sunny, when it's gonna you're rain. not you knock out these two amazing mountains yes you end up going to which one next a Kakangwa. What's it uh, called? I don't even know. The, I don't even know the name, so forgive me. Uh, a Kakangwa. Okay, where is this? Uh, Argentina. Argentina. Beautiful yes. place to visit, man. You've been to some amazing oh. places. Yes, yes. I got to visit a lot of beautiful places. Because okay, I know people who have gone on cruises to Antarctica. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I used to be in the travel world. Okay. And they would get so sick just going on a cruise there they're on a beautiful boat and you climb these mountains i mean think about that it's very impressive you yeah, know it is it is so you go to you decide to go to south america now so argentina has the highest peak in in south america yes and say the name one more time Acacagua. Acacagua. sounds like yeah. a, something like ace ventura would say in uh, ace ventura <laughs> and to Acacagua. Almost, <laughs> and it's a very high actually it's almost seven thousand meters and you went to the top of that? Yes. That's freaking yes. crazy. You went during their summer? Yes. Which is and which is our winter. Yes. So you went there in like what, January, February? Uh, yes, it was February. See, I'm not it that was... I'm not that stupid, you see? <laughs> I know a little bit of geology, huh? <laughs> yeah, it was February and it, it, it can be very, very uh hot in Antarctica. Like you start with climbing and hiking with plus uh, 30 degrees and after three days it can be minus 30 degrees like it is whoa and the wow. and sometimes they call the windy mountain because there are a lot of strong winds in, in Antarctica and actually in our group two tents tents got destroyed by the wind and we got to like get out our tents and help the people who their tents got des destroyed and stuff it is a really crazy climate. what about you though i guess this is a crazy question how the hell do you even if you're about to get frostbite mm -hmm. in a couple of minutes mm -hmm. how do you use the bathroom diaper <laughs> um uh okay uh, you go outside in antarctica we did it everything outside uh in a special bag because in plastic bags and you carry it on your own with you on your backpack wow man because you cannot but how it. do you like it's so cold you can get frostbite like you know like what i'm saying like your butt you wait for the sun to come out and then you go in for the bathroom but what happens if you can't wait this is what i'm saying this is a bit, this is why people need to understand what you did here and i'm not doing it to be funny it's a little okay. bit fun it's a little bit funny but when, <laughs> it is what i mean <laughs> no but when but when you when you think about it i mean i'm, I'm being very serious here the, okay. am, the amount of inconvenience mm -hmm. you know that you put yourself into to, to, to accomplish this. This is not a joke. I mean, you literally had to use the bathroom in a bag and carry. I mean, this is not, this is not mm -hmm. a joke. Like this is very serious. If you think about it. Okay. And not just well, that also exposing yourself to the elements where remember in those temperatures, negative 30 yeah. two two minutes frostbite starts. Yeah. Three, four minutes frostbite starts or, 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 or so, to me, it's just, I want them to understand, like, this is not like, oh, okay, because she was 17 years old, she made it, like, you know, anyone can do it. No, no, no. This is, like, this is no joke. No, it is very tough mentally and physically, and you have to face a lot of 
difficulties on your way that they got. Like, I didn't know what to do in this time going to the bathroom. And uh, once I did it in my tent in plastic bag, if you want to know it, <laughs> because it was very- cool it, provides, it provides a little bit of protection, okay. Yeah, yeah, and you just, it was like, you do it, and during the night, you don't go out of the tent, you have a plastic, um, how do you call it, like bot bottle? Yes, plastic bottle. And you do it on the bottle, you just say to your tent mate, like I want to do, I want to pee or something. Can you just turn around? Animals anything. or anything, anything to worry about? Bears, anything like that? Anything dangerous? No, 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 no. Okay, so now the one back in Argentina, uh, was that a hard one for you? Was, was you, I mean, yeah. obviously 7,000, I mean, any close calls there, any danger? It was, it was very hard. Uh, a lot, uh, the only, it was dangerous because of the altitude. I think that that's why that that's the one thing that makes that one thing dangerous. It's and the there's altitude. snow. There's snow on all of them. It doesn't matter that summer, right? At that that level, there's snow up there. No, no. Oh, no, there no, wasn't no. snow. No, it wasn't snow. That's very interesting. But if you if you climb it from the other side, from one from another side, uh, the Polish side, there is a huge glacier. There's a glacier on the other side. Okay. Yes, snow, but not from the route where we climbed it. No, no, no. Is that maybe because the sun hits it? Maybe that's why. Yeah, yeah, that's why. Fascinating. So Argentina and, is an amazing place. How long did you guys spend yeah. in Argentina? How long? How long did that trek take you? Um, it took three weeks. Yes, yeah, three weeks. You did you go? Did you, you get to see Buenos Aires? Did you go to the capital? Did you? Uh, yes. Did you yes, do the? Did. did you do some tango? Yes, I did. I do everything. And actually the wine and the steak, the meat, it is oh. Amazing. Yeah, they have some of the best. And over there, they start dinner at 12 o'clock at night in Argentina. <laughs> yeah. They have dinner at 12 o'clock and then they go out at 2 o'clock in the morning to, to party. Yeah. yeah. Amazing place to visit. Amazing but, place. But besides, you know, doing these amazing trips, these missions that you're on, you're, you're, you're seeing the world, you're learning things about different cultures. This is the best education a human being can get. Would you agree? Yes. Yes, I totally agree. It's different between reading stuff in a book and then actually going yeah. and seeing different cultures and people and you're people, meeting, yeah. you met people of different nationalities that came on these missions with you in these journeys. Yes. Now these yes. friends that you meet when you're hiking these mountains, you become friends for life. You still talk to a lot of these people? Yes, I have a lot of friends who I still talk to. Uh, all of them maybe, we, we talk once in a while. And there is this girl, Anuja, she was climbing with her friend, with her sister, Aditi. They were from India. I could tell just from and, the name. Yeah, did you know? Yes, you can tell it from their names. I have a lot of Indian um, friends. Like, I'm sorry? I have a lot of Indian friends. That's how I knew. Yes. Yes. So and you're still in touch? I, yes, I'm still in touch with them. And like we plan to, she, she wanted to come here in Kosovo. And a lot of fr friends from America and Australia who I climbed with these mountains, they came in Kosovo. After I finished the seven summits, I had a party here in Kosovo and they all came here and visited Kosovo. And, and they, they loved it. Kosovo. And they loved it. Yeah, and they loved it. Yes, they loved it. And people don't realize how beautiful it is to visit these lands of Albania and Kosovo. Yeah, there is this girl uh, who came in Kosovo and stayed only 24 hours. She only came here to say hi to us, and then she flew to Italy. Uh, she had some meetings. Yeah, but Italy is a 30, 40 minute flight. I mean, it's not that bad. Yeah, but, yeah, but still like coming to- It was respect. No, no, of course. But I'm saying, but like, it wasn't that crazy. It's, you know, you fly in, you fly out. It's like, you know, it's not like we're, we, we're in America where we, we think of Italy as like other side of the world. But for you guys, it's a little bit closer. It's like me going yeah, from- she came Yes, but she came from America, from Los Angeles in Kosovo. First? Yes. And then and went then to Italy. She flew, yeah. That's very nice of her. If she's watching, and you should send her the video. Say her name. Uh, her name is Emily. Emily, we appreciate you for being friendly and respecting us. And we want you to go back to Albania and enjoy a month there, especially in the summer on the ocean. It's beautiful. Yes. So what's the next mountain? Uh... Everest, the next one is Everest, the highest in the world. Ooh. Okay, yeah. talk about preparing for this. People in Everest. Talk about this one. This one, this is one of the most amazing and challenging mountains I've climbed in my life. It took me two months to climb it. Tell people where Everest are just in case they don't know, because we never know who's listening and we try to educate people also. Where is Everest located? Uh, it is in border with Nepal and China. 
uh, so it's in Tibet. For you can climb it from Tibet and you can climb it from Nepal. Um, free I Tibet, it, free Tibet. <laughs> yeah, free Tibet. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know we like to protest as Albanians. Free. Yeah. Free. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but so there is south and north side, and some people go and climb from the north side because they want to escape climbing from south side because there is a huge Kumbu ice fall. If you go from base camp to camp one, there is an ice fall called Kumbu, and it is like boo every five minutes, uh, a huge ice falls. Ice fall breaks like maybe icicles. Better, so big icicles. Yes. Ice is, ice is that fall that can hurt you, kill you. No, they are like, um, it is a glacier, like, um, it's not like ice, ice, you have to climb in it. Okay. It's like a glacier, okay. but it's not regular great glacier. And okay. it just breaks while you're climbing, it just, bra it just breaks. So the know? ice chips as you're using yeah. the hammers to climb. Yeah, it, it, just, it just, you never, it, it won't hold it. So it's very, you can die. It's very dangerous. Yes. yes. So you go from a different people, side. Yes. So they want to avoid this one, but we went to, to we climbed it from some side and we had, we went through combines all t uh, three times because when you have to climb Everest, you go with climb, you climb it with rotation. First you go from best town to camp one, and then you come back, sleep like three nights, and then you go camp one, camp two, then you come back again to base camp and sleep again. And then you go, for the summit push, you know, you go up and down and up and down for your body to acclimate. Um, and Everest was a very dangerous one. Uh, it was very hard the, to do the acclimatization. A lot of people in my group failed to climb it because of the altitude sickness. Uh, one uh, person in my group where I spent two months with him, we, we ate on a table we climbed together and everything. Unfortunately, he died while coming back to the, from the summit. Wow. So someone yeah. on your journey with you yeah. died. We celebrated his birthday on Everest Base Camp. Like I sent him happy birthday. And then after three weeks, he just died. And, that, and, and that's because of what he did on Everest. Yes, uh, he got. How old, how, how old was he? If you don't mind me asking. He was he was sixty he sixty something, and this was his last one. But I've seen uh, five dead bodies on Everest, and I had to sit on them. I had to, to, to be, uh, sometimes I had to sit on them to uh, pass, you know, through them because they were uh, just sitting in the middle of the trail, in the middle of the rope. Frozen. You know? Yes. And they just they leave them there. Yes, they just, you have to pay money. If you want your body to get back, you have to pay money. Uh, you, if you you want, they can like leave your body there or to put it in a crevasse, to burn. It depends how much you pay. Because before you go to Abras, you have to sign what you want to do with your body if you die. <laughs> yeah. This is crazy, dad, man. This is freaking crazy. My dad said, like, when I received the email from the guide, what do you want to do with your body? If you die, he was like, I had I had to sign for you for for my little baby. He was like, and he just he just said to him, it's not on the project to happen anything bad, you know. And he said, come on, Nita, you have to sign what you want us to do with your body. It just it is crazy. Uh, and a lot of people when they saw dead bodies on the way, they were like shocked, you know, and they didn't want to go, you know, to 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 go. To the top and they wanted just to go back because they were like if this guy or this girl died here i can die here too, here too so i just want to go back but i prepared myself that much that i didn't care like i saw so you body. saw five dead frozen people yes. that tried to climb mount everest yes. how were they frozen were they sitting i mean i mean i i know it's hard to ask you but i'm just very curious so i'm gonna ask you what um, what, did, what were these bodies look like were they frozen with their gear on i mean um it was one it was one girl uh maybe 15 20 meters from summit uh she died from hypothermia she was like me they, how people in her sherpa told us she was like um she 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 was very tired and she didn't have any oxygen because 
your 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 oxygen can be gone because you use it. The tank. And then yes, and then she just sat there and the sheriff asked. It was like, do you want to go? Do you want to come down? She was like, no, just leave me here. And they leave you there. No one can do anything to you. Like you have to push yourself. And then she died from hypothermia because her gloves were off. Like she was unzipped. Like you know, because of the hypothermia, she was all like trying to 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 uh, take her clothes off. Like the jumpsuit did everything. Uh, one of them was uh, covered with snow. Like you can see her face and like her chest and like her boots, but she was partly, partly covered with snow and, and it was um, frozen. Three of them were in the middle of the rope and people were trying, like the Sherpas were getting their bodies back to base camp. And it, and this one, and it was one, it was sitting there in the middle of the rope, like it is alive. He was just sitting like this, you know, he had his goggles on, <laughs> his backpack on, everything. He just, he was just frozen. And it was very, it was very scary because while coming back from the summit, it is Hillary, uh, Hillary stop, you know, it is with this part. And I, uh, I don't know what happened with my foot. I couldn't reach. Um, I couldn't reach the, the 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 rocks and the snow there, and I just slipped and I fell, and I, like I almost got into his backpack and into his, you know, into him, you know, and that was really scary. I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, please, please, please save me, save me from from being away from him. But I prepared myself and I didn't care. I'm like, yeah, this one died. I don't want to die, so let's just begin. Let's just continue with. Uh, with our journey and I and I actually asked my dad what what would you what would you do if something happens to me and he was like okay if something happens to you I would like just jump or I would cut my rope or something and I would you know I cannot live without with with that 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 thing and I'm like no that's crazy because if something happens to me you have to go back home to my mom and my my brother because it is different if they lose one person and it's different if they lose two persons. So what did you want them to do if something happened to you? To leave you on the mountain or bring you back? To leave me? I'm like you have to, he signed to bring me back through the mountain. I'm like you have to sign to leave me on the mountain because because I want my body to rest on the mountain because I love the mountain. And, and he was like Nika don't talk like this. Like you're not resting anywhere. You're coming back home with me. Stop talking bad things. But I'm like, if something happens to me, I have to go back home. And if something happens to you, I would go back home. And if you don't go back home, I will never forgive you for that because of my mom and my my, my brother. Like you have to go and be there for them. And there was this moment on our summit day where my dad was uh, was out of his oxygen and the Sherpas, they, they refused to change his oxygen. They were like, yeah, let's go and climb a little bit more. And he was like, he could, he could not walk. He, was, he could not climb. He was like, oh, like I cannot breathe and stuff. And I got into a big fight with the Sherpa. I'm like, you have to change his oxygen bottle because can you And what are they called? Body? Shirkas? Sherpas. Sherpas. Yes. These are your I'm guides, like, the guides in Kilimanjaro. Yeah, local ones. Yeah, local ones. And then they changed his oxygen bottle. So everything was, do it was going good until my oxygen mask froze. Yeah. Like these things happened to me, like my oxygen mask froze. That was crazy. And I couldn't breathe. And I told my Sherpa, uh, I cannot breathe. My oxygen, my mask is frozen. It was like, yeah, mine is too. Mine is frozen too, but yes, let's climb it. And I'm like, I am not you. Like you can climb it because Sherpas, a lot of Sherpas can climb without oxygen because they live like the, the, the highest village is in almost 5,000 meters. And they they are used to living in very high altitude and elevation. So he was like, yeah, let's climb it. I'm like, I cannot breathe. Like you have to help me because I cannot breathe. And he didn't care. He was like, yeah, let's just climb it. Sounds like so these I'm guys are like assholes. No offense. Yeah, but they, they try, but they cannot like. How many people die? How many, pe life. how many people die trying to do this? A lot. This year, the year that I climbed, 11 people died. Yes, 11 people died. So you go that. through all of this and you make yeah. it to the top. Yeah. Of Kilimanjaro, I mean of uh, Mount Everest. Yeah. You make it to the top of the highest mountain on earth. Mm -hmm. What does that feel like, man? 
Mm, it feels good. It feels nice. <laughs> I don't know. I cannot describe it. Uh, I just couldn't believe it. I'm on top of the world. You know, I'm like, wow, I am on top of the world. And I'm like, you're on top oh. of the highest place on yes. this yes. planet. Yes. N no one is high. No one is like, you know, you are the high, you are on top of everything. Are you the youngest female to ever do that to that mountain no. by itself? Uh, and Mount Everest, no, there are a lot of, not a lot of, there are some younger than me who climbed Everest. Maybe the locals or whatever. People yes, are. the locals. Yes, the locals. There is this, this girl, this girl, I don't know how old was she when she climbed it, but uh, she was uh, from Nepal and she was younger than me. I know this one, but it feels amazing. It feels really good. Like you feel that you have accomplished something really big and you say like, I climbed this mountain and nothing can stop me in the future you know like whatever happens to me not like not only on the mountains but whatever whatever happens on the and on, on, on know, back down there in the real world i can take it yes i can take it and that's a, a really good feeling is there ever that feeling when you finish you're like damn i gotta go back down now do you ever get that <laughs> do you ever get that feel like damn okay i made it here but now i gotta go all yeah. the way down yeah. yes uh, almost every time i'm like i'm like boo damn bring me a helicopter i want to go from by helicopter down to base camp but yeah you have yeah to, but you have to you, finish it too to make it real yeah, you have to get down this, right uh let me tell this is very interesting if uh the uh, the helicopter can fly only to camp two of everest you cannot fly higher and uh because of um people sometimes can get no can get frostbite or they can get can get sick so uh the helicopter come and get them from camp two or camp one to send them down to Kum to uh to the city and if you climb mount everest and you go back to camp two or camp one and the helicopters comes and pick you up there and you don't go by your foot by your feet into the base camp uh you don't get the issue that you climb mount everest even though you were on the top if you don't come come back to base camp you don't get the the paper that you climb the highest well, well it's a good it's a good way to keep business going too but still I, I think there has to be a standard and i think that's a fair standard you got to make it back yeah it's not just about getting up it's about getting back down. Yeah. back down and people say you're half to the summit when you're when you're on top that's only the half of your way you know you didn't summit you summit when you go back home to your loved ones that's your summit i that's agree i agree you got to finish it yes you got to so it. you come back now you finished this amazing feat that most people, if they could just do that one mountain, they're, they're proud. You did something else after that. It was Denali. Oh my God, Denali. Denali was the hardest one. Now, where's this? Remind people, because, you know. Alaska. Alaska. Yeah, welcome Beautiful to America, Alaska. my friend. Welcome to America. Beautiful Alaska. Oh my God, I loved it. Where did you go it. there? In August, September, August? I mean, August, July? Uh, June, July. Yes, it, it was July. It was July. Yes. And uh, we spent two months on Everest and after six, like on 27th of uh, May, no, I was in July, June in, 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 in uh, Alaska, 27th of May, I was on top of the world. And then 6th of uh, June, I was base camp in Alaska. So we were like seven, eight, 10 days and I was really tired from, uh, from Everest. So and you went like right after this? Yes. You, I own, can I just I say own, something? Own, you guys are crazy. You really are crazy Albanians. Mm -hmm. The hell? Yes. Take a month at least. Get <laughs> ten days okay. later, you're on another mountain. Yes, you are. We are on another mountain. <laughs> we flew. We flew like we we came back down. And you know what? People when they summit Mount Everest, they come back to camp four and they sleep one night, and then they go to camp two, sleep another night, and then go to base camp. But we had to catch the flight to go to Alaska. So from the summit, we came back directly to camp two and then to base camp. We didn't like even sleep for 21 for, for hours. We were just climbing up and down. It was crazy. And then, so we flew to Alaska. We flew to New York first. My mom and my, my brother, they come to meet us in New York. Welcome to my Alaska. town. Yes. What'd you think about <laughs> yes. New York? Oh, it's, it's amazing. Why don't you I, climb, climb one of our buildings? They're pretty high, no? Uh, I went on top of the rock. I don't know if that counts. Yeah. With this elevator, but it's yeah. okay. <laughs> well, how would you compare the views of being on top of those buildings to the views of being on? Is it close? Is it a very nice view, you think, from these high buildings that we have? I mean, I, I know it's not the same. 
you cannot compare it. But it's also very nice, no? Yes, it's also very nice. Yes, of course, to be on top of your building and see. Yes, it's also very nice. But being on top of a mountain is a different kind of feeling. So we flew directly to, then from there we flew to Alaska and we had to carry, my backpack was 43 kilograms. Almost 90 pounds. Yes. Uh, and plus I had a sled of 10 or 15 kilos. A sled? So I could, yes, a sled. I was pulling a sled and I had the backpack. So I couldn't put my backpack without a help from my father or from my guide because it was too heavy for me. And we had everything. We had tents, sleeping bags, sleeping pads, like the food for one month. We had everything with us. And we climbed Denali very fast. Like people, it takes 20, 21 day to climb Denali and we climbed it for half, half of that time. Uh, 11, we like 10, 11 months. days. Yes, like because when you climb Denali, you go from base camp, you go to camp one and send some stuff and then you go sleep to base camp. And then the other day you, you send the other stuff because it's very uh, heavy weight. So you have to like, it's, it, the system is like that. You send some stuff and then you go pack and then you go with the other stuff with the other way there. And we didn't do that. We just went from, with one push and then we finished. But... Um, and that's the highest in North America. Yes, but... Denali was the first time and when I said, uh, I'm done. This is it. I cannot go further. I think I failed. Denali was the one when I said, I'm coming back home. Because... Um, How did you get through it? I don't know. We were walking to Camp 5. We were climbing to Camp 5. And then we, we got up to fix lines. And um, I just couldn't. I just couldn't, I couldn't, I, I was trying and trying and I couldn't. And my, and the guy said, okay, let's go back to camp and sleep and for two, three days and rest. And then we go back again because you are tired. And I'm like, okay. And the next day we, we get to the same place and I get the same feeling. Like I just can't, my body just says to me, like, Brika, you have to go back. You have to go back because like, these are your limits. Like you, you've pushed too far. And my dad was like, okay, Brika, if, if this is like, we, this is it. We can go back. Do you want to go back, you know, to base camp and fly home? And I was like, are you crazy? Are you out of your mind? How do you like, why are you asking this to go up and down? Like we climbed Everest, we have to climb this one and then finish the project and everything. I was really mad. And like, I couldn't control myself. And then he said, okay, then start climbing while you're sitting here. I'm like, I cannot climb. Just leave me alone. Like, why are you talking to me? And then they just left me for like 10 minutes. Like no one speak to me. I just sat there and I was just thinking and thinking and thinking. I, I, and I didn't, want, I didn't know what to do, to go back or to, to climb up because I couldn't. And then after 10 minutes, I'm like, yeah, let's go and climb it. <laughs> and then I started and I climbed it and I don't know how I climbed it, but I, I did, I climbed it. And through, 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 uh, while I was you're showing, climb, You're showing the power of the human mind. Yes when it chooses even through pain and sickness and the possibility yes. of death yes when it is truly made up its mind yes and you didn't know if you would do it you 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 you, you risked no. your life by doing it yes i did you were determined yeah. you pushed through the pain yeah you're making me want to go on and run right now i'm like embarrassed of my physical condition right now i'm so you're inspiring me i'm not just saying that to, to give you a compliment i'm ashamed of myself i think you've inspired me to to get healthy again well, it's very amazing what you've done i'm serious i'm very very proud of you and i'm even more proud that you're one of my countrymen country women i should thank say you. thank you it's amazing I, it's freaking amazing everywhere in life and even on the mountains is 60 percent how you train your mind and 40 percent your body because sometimes you are prepared like physically but your mind just says stop it this is it and if you if and if you can push through your limits, and if you can like tell your mind that this is not what I want to do, I can I can push myself even more, and then you can do it. Because I was in this kind of situations, you know, and that's where I'm like, okay, I, I climbed it with my mind. The old, I always say this: I climbed it with my mind and with my 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 my, my feet. It's important and, for people to understand this. If you're in a place in your life, yeah, okay, you were doing this because this is something you wanted to do. But yes. there's people out there that are not in good places in life. 
They, they look at their circumstances. They want to give up. They let their mind tell them that they can't do anything else in life. That's it. They're, this is all I'll ever be. This is all I'll ever do. And what you're, what you're explaining here is a phenomenon that I think people need to understand. Whether they're young or they're old, you have learned this at a very young age. That when you focus yes. and you've made your mind up and you're willing to die for what you want to do, the only thing that will stop you is death. Yes. And you've put your life, um, you've put your life where your mouth is, not your money. You put your life where you might say, I'm going to do this. And you yeah. freaking did it, man. It's freaking amazing. Yeah. So when you reach that summit, even though you had already climbed the world's highest mountain, mm -hmm. do you feel in some ways that when you peaked Denali, that that was actually more gratifying than Mount Everest? Yes. Am I, am I correct to make that assumption? Yes. Because you almost didn't, but the fact that you finished, you must have felt amazing. Yes. I, I, I thought I, I, I would not summit Denali. And everyone was afraid of me not summit, summiting Denali because it's very tough, man. And I had blisters on my feet, like huge blisters. And they were bleeding, basically. Like my feet were bleeding from blisters. And I had blisters on my hand. I had blisters on my feet. And so Denali, it was one of the most challenging one for me. Even though people say Everest, I don't know. For me, it was Denali. It was very hard, very tough. And when I when I when I got back, when I got like like we summited, and then while we were coming back to base camp, we uh, from camp four to base camp, we climbed it for one day. Like we did not sleep, we did not do nothing. We just climbed. We were just climbing down because we had to go to Elbrus, the other one, <laughs> immediately. So we were just like doing one mountain and one mountain one after uh, another. So uh, when we went to base camp. We slept outside without tents, only on sleeping bags. And when the airplane came to, to pick us up from Denali base camp, uh, I could not walk. People, like my dad and my God, they had to help me because I could not stand on my feet because of the blisters and like the damage it caused to my feet. But so just to I get just to get to the plane, though, you had already made it back to the base. Yes. Just to get to the I airplane. Know, just to get it, I don't know how, how I made it to base camp. Like literally, I was crying, and I had I have one video. Uh, I recorded myself. I was like in very like I don't know. I was at my lowest, um, and um, my mom find found out that video. I put it on 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 you know on the laptop, and I never wanted to tell anyone this video. And my mom just was uh, was my mom was looking at my uh, photos of from from the expedition and saw the the, the video. And she was crying and she came, and she came to me and she was hugging me and she was like, because I'm like, oh, mom, please help me. I'm, I'm, I'm dying. I'm literally dying. I cannot like, I cannot do this. Like, I just want to be home. I just want to be with you. And it, 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 it was really, it was a very touching video. But yeah. Yeah. Now, Good memories. I know. Listen, this is amazing stuff, man. So what about after this? Oh. We went to Elbrus, and me and my dad. But now, where's that? From, uh, Russia, the highest mountain in Russia. Uh, it is the highest mountain in Europe, and we skied down from Elbrus. Me, my dad, Mike, the guy, then Len. It is. Uh, it was another from our group. Uh, it, for me, it was very easy to climb Elbrus. We climbed. We climbed it uh, through the day. It was like one day climb, and then we skied down. Uh, but my dad, he fell and he broke his uh, ligaments in his knee and like he had to do uh, operation. So he broke his ligaments and everything. We went back, we came in Kosovo. And then after, came, after we came to Kosovo, we had to climb one more left. We had Carsons, after Albrus, we had Carsons. And my dad has, has his ligaments broken and cut and everyone, every doctor, they, they said, you have, we have to operate your leg. Like we have to, you cannot go on the mountains with that leg because you can destroy it and you can lose your leg. And my dad, with that leg, without going in an operation, he climbed Carson's Pyramid, which is the highest in Indonesia. I'm like, he, he, had, he had this huge thing on his knee, like, because he couldn't, you know, he, I don't know how it's called there. When you broke your, your leg that you, they put it in your knee. Cast. Yes. Like he had that in his knee and he climbed 
uh, Carson's and Carson, it, it is very technical one. Like you have to climb on rocks all the time. And he did it like, they, because, like this because he didn't want to like leave, let me alone to go in. You weren't I, worried that he was something, you know, were you, did you yeah, try, did, did to, you try to convince him not to go? I'm like, okay, no, I could not, like, it was very, it was very hard decision for both of us because I could not climb it with my dad because I was 17 and I needed someone with me. I needed my dad or someone that, you know, that is with me because I was minor and my dad could not climb it and he didn't know what to do and who to send with me. So he said, I'm coming with you. Like, I'm coming. I'm doing injured. This. He went up to oh. that mountain injured. And most of us can't get off of our asses and go to the gym for 30 minutes. This is embarrassing. I'm embarrassed. I am embarrassed of myself. Tell your father, I can't wait to meet him one day and have a coffee. Hopefully World War III doesn't start. But the next time I come back to Kosovo, I'm taking your yeah. I'm taking you and your father to dinner. Totally. Yes, we'll, sure. We'll go to Trofta. I know you guys like that place over okay, there. Yes, Trofta, yes. Okay, I'll okay. buy you guys some fish. And uh, I just, I want to meet this guy. I'm very impressed. What an amazing human being. Not only yes. that, but... You know, to, to, to do this with his daughter, I think, is unbelievable. So I'm very proud. Yes. So you guys knocked that one out. Is there anything else left? How many other mountains we have left here? Because there's so many. No, this is the seventh one, but uh, I got sick on this one. You on did? Uh, I got food poison. Well, now you know how I feel when I go to Kosovo. Huh? <laughs> That's, it happens to me when I go to Kosovo sometimes. Yeah, yeah it happened to me in Indonesia. <laughs> I was vomiting. I was really feeling, I was feeling really, really But really you, vomiting. you made it to the top though. Yes. I made it to the top, but. Food poisoning is the we worst. Down, we were rappelling down. Uh, there was this time that I did not have strength to, to pull the rope. And I just went down like, whoo, for like two meters down. And like my body was like, boom, like, you know, and the rocks. And it was really dangerous, but. We summited the summer summit, and that was really, really nice. And I didn't care. I just when I'm on the mountain, I don't care how I feel. Like if I am sick, if I had I have food poisoned, or if it hurts somewhere, I'm just like, yeah, it will it'll go away. Let's just climb the mountain. It's very interesting. Sometimes when I when I uh, sit and think uh, what we went through, I'm like, wow, well, that's amazing. Now, are you in the Guinness Book of World Records? Oh, we did all the applications and stuff, but it takes time because they have to verify everything and they have. So to we're going to see you in the Guinness book soon. Okay. Yes. God willing. <laughs> this is just unbelievable. So you accomplished it. You, 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 you said you're going to do it. You and your father and mm -hmm. you guys did something that is very few will ever do. And for you to do it at your age as a young woman is truly extraordinary. And you make our people proud. You make every woman out there proud. And you make every human being who is maybe lazy and maybe thinks they can't do certain things that you're proving to them, even if you don't know you can, if you have the will. Yeah. Vulneti, as Albanians say. Yes. You can do anything on this earth. There is one uh, quote that I always listen to because I listen to a lot of motivational speeches uh, like every day. Uh, there is this quote, a quote that says, if you want to breathe, if you want to succeed as much as you want to breathe, then you will be successful. Eric Thomas. Yes. E.T. Shout out to E.T. if he's watching us. He's yes. one, of, one of the people that I look up to also, and I do listen to a lot of his lectures. Unfortunately, Sometimes maybe I don't do it as much for my physical health, but I think <laughs> the fact that I started my show is proof. I should have done this a long time ago. And I think that, you know, everyone has these visions in their life, these dreams in their life, these goals that they say one day, one day. And I think, you know, you're proving to everyone that you just got to get up and do it. Yeah. Now you accomplished something amazing. What are mm -hmm. you doing now? You're in, you're in college, you're in studying, you're in school. Yeah, what I'm in college. I'm studying law. My dad is a lawyer, so I want to be a lawyer too. My brother's a lawyer. You advocate you. Really? Yeah, my brother's a you know, here in the U.S., obviously. But um, no, it's, it's amazing. So what type yeah. of law, what type of law do you want to study in practice? Um, I, I want to study criminal law. I always like criminal law, but who knows? Maybe my, I will change my mind in the future. I don't know. Don't worry, you'll always have work. Yeah. <laughs> Especially in our lands, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. 
But yeah, but now I'm thinking uh, to do and climb. I had plans to climb some mountains this year, but because of Corona, everything was canceled. But uh, we're planning to do another thing with me, with my dad, climbing North and South Pole. And if we do North and South Pole and we finish seven summits, then it is this challenge. It's called Grand Slam. And if we do North, South and South Pole, I'll be the youngest person to, to do it Grand Slam. So I'm looking forward to doing this, but I need to find some sponsors because uh, it is very expensive. And uh, well, I'm, when I'm, you're ready, let me know. And maybe I know a few people out here. We can maybe do a little fundraising for you. I know a amazing human being, and I'm, she's a very strong, proud Albanian woman. Her name's Bibi Malota. Maybe she can help us raise a little bit of money for you. Okay, thank you. I I, I appreciate that. And, and and then I'm planning to climb K2, which is the second highest mountain in the world. And if I climb that before age of 21, and I'm 19 right now, uh, I can be also the youngest person in the world to climb it. Are you an amazing skier? I will, yes. Any, I, I any, anything you can do Olympic-wise? Are you allowed to compete for anything in Kosovo? Is there anything like ski-wise? Is there anything that you, could, you think you could compete that maybe you can bring us another medal? Uh, yes, I can. And I was a competitor in skiing, and I, I won medals. But um, I just want to 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 ski, you know, just like a hobby. You enjoy because it. I don't want. I, I, I broke, don't like. I broke I my ankle. I broke my ankle skiing, and I never won again ever. Oh my god! Really? I, I liked it, and uh, I broke my ankle in uh, six. And then I don't like it anymore. <laughs> six, after sixth grade, and then you know, it, it destroyed my basketball season and all this other stuff, and. Oh. This is a long time ago, and back then the boots weren't as good as they are today. But I mean, it's a great sport, but it's it's also dangerous. You know, it's one of the most yes. most injuries is skiing. But yes. so we're going to be seeing some amazing things from you, and God willing, when you do accomplish the Grand Slam, yes, okay. we'd love to have you back on. Mm -hmm. What do you want to say to to the women out there who maybe Those think that they can't do something or? Maybe they're not as good as men in certain sports. What do you want to say to that young girl out there that's listening to this episode today? Dare to dream and believe in your in your goals. That's it. If you like, you have dream big and work hard, and you'll do anything. You'll do like anything. But first, you have to believe in yourself, and you have to work a lot. Because if you don't work a lot, then you cannot succeed like your success depends on your hard work if you work hard you will success a lot if you don't work hard you will not success a lot so you just have to believe in your dreams and work hard imagine and if be, and imagine if you would have stopped after that first time and when yeah. you went to france you wouldn't have been where you are today you didn't give up no, you made yeah. a comeback yes and we you have to be patient because good things need time Folks, you, you, you heard it here first. You've met someone that has accomplished amazing things. She never gave up. She had setbacks. She made comebacks. And we're going to be hearing a lot from her. This extraordinary woman has shown us that no matter what you've been through in life, no matter how many setbacks you've had chasing your dreams, as long as you have air in your lungs and the will to achieve, you can always make a comeback. Mrika Nikchi. And we're going to see a lot from her in the sport of mountain climbing. And we thank her for spending time with us and showing us her extraordinary story that inspires so many. And I promise you the next time, if I'm alive, I'm going to be a lot skinnier the next time you see me. You've inspired me. You've inspired me to get my fat ass up and start working out. I feel good, so I inspired you. You inspire everyone. This is Beck Lover, and we'll see you on the next episode of Beck Lover and the Comeback Team. Beck Lover. Oh, 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 oh,